Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about work vlogs, cybersecurity, and having a career in technology. And if this video was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up so more people can find it through the YouTube algorithm. So today we're gonna to be discussing a highly requested video from you guys, which is interview prep for cybersecurity jobs. And this is definitely a big topic, especially when I was interviewing, graduating college, and looking for entry-level cybersecurity roles. So I kind of split this into the more technical side of cybersecurity questions and topics, as well as the more behavioral interviews, where you're kind of just answering questions about walkthroughs, scenarios, and just basic behavioral tell me about yourself questions. And I also have timestamps all over the video, so you can definitely jump around depending on what topics that you already know. Okay, so from my experience interviewing for cybersecurity roles, a lot of it comes down to questions that are easy to ask. And unfortunately, a lot of the questions are either you know it or you don't. Because if someone asks you like, what port is HTTPS? That's something you know or you don't know. You know, it's not something that you can like BS around or try to like talk around. And that's what makes cybersecurity interviews a bit harder, especially because I come from a coding background where you're kind of able to solve a problem using multiple different scenarios. Like even if you don't know how to use hash maps, you can get to a problem, maybe trying to use a different way or brute force. So with that noted, one of the first topics is encryption. This goes from encryption algorithms, hashing algorithms, the differences between the few, which ones are secure and which ones are depreciated and no longer being being used or which ones you would use in which scenarios and there's also very niche algorithms like two fish and you should try to look up the most common algorithms to just have an idea of what they are and what they do of course the most common ones are aes sha md and everything in those families so i would definitely recommend at least looking into those so you have an idea as well as the differences between asymmetric and asymmetric encryption as well as block ciphers versus stream ciphers and those would be the main things in encryption that are very high level enough to be asked during a standard cybersecurity analyst or cybersecurity interview and honestly a lot of the topics that are interviewable are actually found in the comptia security plus exam which is a certification that i actually took last year so if you guys are interested definitely check out the link below i made a video about resources that i use and even if you don't want the certification it's always good to study because it's also a very good resource for all the material in cybersecurity at a high level that you can study just for interviews okay so the next thing is security protocols and port numbers so in my first interview for a cybersecurity role um, it was actually for a cybersecurity internship i was given a quiz that literally asked me things like what is the port number for this um what port number is this when would you use this protocol versus the other and different things like that and then afterwards we kind of went over the answers and reviewed them so that was definitely a very anxiety inducing interview but also it just goes to show that a lot of these questions are straight up like you know it or you don't and that's why i feel like i really want to stress the importance of you should know standard port numbers you should know what they do you should know when to use them and you should also know if you're given a network scenario, which also I'm gonna talk about later, and they're asking you what's wrong with this network. And maybe you're doing an Nmap scan of all the open ports and you're there to see, okay, so what's wrong with this right now? Are there any port numbers that are open that are really suspicious? So that's why it's really important because if you see a port number for a remote desktop protocol, but you don't know that that's what that port is for, then that question is already like over your head and then that's when you might start like getting worried a little bit. So that's why I feel like it's really important to know those basic standard protocols. And again, CompTIA is Security Plus has a pretty good list of protocols and port numbers that you should at least know and I believe there's about 20 or 30 of them so I will link that below okay so another thing is security tool knowledge this one sounds really basic but honestly when I was even studying for software development or software engineering roles they would ask me questions like oh what is MongoDB what kind of language is Python is Python an interpreted language and different standard general questions like that so that's why I feel like you should have a general knowledge of the different tools that are used for example Burp Suite is probably one of the biggest ones in testing fiddler is a big one metasploit is also a big one but it may not be as commonly used as something like burp suite but generally you should know that oh yeah burp suite is used as a proxy and you can use that to take in traffic from your browser and basically analyze it you should also know the difference and know different examples of packet sniffers network scanners port scanners as well as just different tools that the community uses as well as open source tools whether that's for open source intelligence or any other role that you're looking for especially if you're going for a beginner type role the most easiest thing that you could do is look up up top 10 most common tools used in cybersecurity and then you'll find those and at least you'll know the idea so if a scenario comes up or a walkthrough or a question comes up like do you know what burp suite is or what does burp suite do or what is burp suite used for like you at least know how to answer high level those questions and then you can always go from there and say hey i know high level what this is it's xyz but i would also love to learn more and do my own research on the job and i'm willing to learn so i feel like that's the key point the fact that you know a bunch of high level things but you're always willing to learn and i feel like that's one big thing that a lot of the interviews that you're going to be going in at least for cybersecurity, are going to be looking for and honestly any role like every interview is really trying to see like how much your willingness is to learn and 
and how passionate you are about the topic. So that's why I feel like those are really important, especially for entry-level roles. Okay, so the next thing is the CIA concepts. And the CIA triad or the CIA triangle is kind of like the really basic foundation of cybersecurity. Sorry, this looks weird, but and it's basically confidentiality, integrity, and availability. These are the three pillars of cybersecurity. Confidentiality, of course, is just making sure that outsiders don't know your information. They don't know any confidential info. Integrity is can we make sure that no one is changing this information without our permission or only the right people are changing this information and how can we trust this information and making sure that it's you know as accurate as possible and then availability is the last pillar which a lot of people don't know is actually a really super important part of cybersecurity <clears throat> because availability talks about ddos attacks talks about being able to keep your applications online for users to use because that in itself is a cybersecurity attack if someone brings down your network and your customers are no longer able to access your website that is an attack on availability and if you worked at any company for any amount of time you know that availability costs a lot of money all the downtime that your company has especially on an application that might be widely used by clients that could be potentially be thousands millions of dollars going down the drain because your application is offline so that's why availability is one of the most important parts of cybersecurity hence the CIA triad so I would definitely try to hammer down these concepts and know if you're given a scenario like you work at X by company there's like this application that needs to be secure you want to implement these logs and you also want to implement some kind of preventative measures for DDoS attacks. What are the CIA concepts that are used in this scenario? And then you can know, okay, well, if you want logs, that means you want to make sure you know who's changing the data, know that they're trustworthy, make sure that integrity is there for any information that's on that application. And then if they're trying to prevent a DDoS attack, then they're mostly trying to account for availability for the application. And of course, that's just an example question that I just thought of. And there's also going to be a lot of deductive reasoning. So you should always try to think as logically as possible. Okay, what's the first step I should do? And what does this mean? And you should always ask why and how for these questions. Questions, especially when you're in an interview where they're doing some kind of walkthrough or scenario and they're trying to get you to give them a solution or trying to get you to say what would you do if this happened so you should always think with the end user in mind the client in mind protecting as much of the customers or the clients or the company's assets as possible which leads me pretty well into the cyber kill chain and this is something that one of my red team mentors says is really really important and honestly I never thought about this before I actually got into cybersecurity even when I was studying for interviews I didn't really think about this but this was originally used as a military term that basically talks about the structure of an attack and I can include some kind of diagram on the screen that can potentially help as well as links below if you guys are interested in learning more but this is one of the most important things that pen testers and red teamers and ethical hackers think about because this is basically the anatomy of an attack from the time when an attacker identifies a target to deciding how they can attack a vulnerability that the target might have exploiting the target controlling the target and then basically reach command and control so you want to keep in mind these concepts and try to understand potentially if you're given a scenario for this attack happened where in the cyber kill chain is this um, how can we stop it and different things like that so you always want to keep that in mind especially when you're going for a pen testing role or some kind of ethical hacking role okay so the next thing is security prevention and security detection so there are a bunch of different tools out there that are very high level again you should really look at CompTIA security plus concepts because I feel like they were just really helpful in helping a beginner like me understand especially because I haven't been in this field for that long these are the concepts that would be really good to know for a potential interview. And this goes from intrusion prevention and intrusion detection systems, firewalls, how to configure a firewall, and you can look online for various examples of this. This is also tested in Security Plus, where a potential question could be that you're given some kind of network and you're told you need to secure this firewall. Like, what would you change? Based on this example companies, third party networks, extra nets, and various different secure and non-secure zones in their network, I feel like understanding at least a high level of firewall configurations is also very important. And also don't forget physical security because if you think about it that is also really important for example did you know that in server rooms or like rooms with very important machinery they don't have crawl spaces or like those vents in the ceilings because someone could potentially sneak into that essentially plug in a usb and exfiltrate data and i feel like that's why it's really important to know high level all these things to the point where you're thinking about parking lot lights fences faraday cages um, which basically stop electromagnetic interference so there's basically a lot of things that you can think about and again these topics are on security plus so let me just add a link below for all this CompTIA security plus topics I, I just feel like it would be really helpful to you guys okay so this video is getting kind of long and the next thing is common security attacks so the most common ones like cross-site scripting sql injection cross-site request forgery there's a lot of different attacks out there and there's actually a list of most common attacks by OWASP so I can link that below and you can check it out and a lot of the pen testing teams also look for these common attacks because 
they are common vulnerabilities so definitely check that out and learn a bit more if you're interested and i can also link below hack the box as well as a few other resources that you can use to get some beginner pen testing experience because even if you're not going for a pen testing role these will be really helpful for you to kind of understand the mind of an attacker and what they're trying to do so then when you get an interview question that has to do with an attack or some intruder in the network then you kind of know like okay what are they going to try to do next they're in this person's account they're trying to they're probably trying to elevate their privileges or find some kind of admin user that they can take advantage of and run higher level attacks or take more control of the system and then you can go from there so that's why it's really good to understand high level all of these roles and all of these different things in the network that kind of work together so then you can answer in the best way possible in any scenario or walkthrough interview that you might have and of course the next thing is the osi model which is basically all the layers in the network and honestly there are acronyms out there i don't remember the exact one that i had but i can put some on the screen or drop some examples on the screen and honestly once you remember them it'll be really easy to kind of recall them like okay this is a data link layer oh that's a network layer this is the physical layer like eventually you're going to be able to differentiate those especially during an interview since i feel like those are some of the really basic levels because from my experience even on this current team there are times when people are like oh yeah that's a network layer problem so that's probably not something that we're worrying about or oh that's an application layer problem so blah 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 so there's a lot of different things that you can infer based on what layer of the network that it is and that's why it's really important to know the OSI model at a high level at least so you can kind of answer questions about them in a potential interview Whew, I need to take a breath or something all right, network security and access controls so this of course is very generic you should at least know the different pieces of equipment or technology that sit on your network and control network access for example what is a router what is a hub what is a proxy server where's your dns server and what are all those little components that are in your network that are securing it and where are you putting each thing for example your internal network is going to be behind a firewall and you might be shown a diagram during your interview where people are like okay this is a example of a network setup what is wrong with this picture is something wrong with it or what would you do to improve it so there's a lot of questions that could go into that and of course that's another reason why it's really important to know like hey oh it's a dns server i know what that does or like oh why isn't there a firewall between the internal network and the extra net which also goes into basic cybersecurity concepts like a honeypot or a honey net which are basically bait networks that companies set up to kind of make attackers think that they got into the real network and they can also analyze what attackers are doing to learn more about how they're attacking and different things that they're trying to do or different things that they're actually looking for and the next thing is phishing attacks so of course phishing is very common um you guys probably have hella spam emails with little notes that say oh this might be a phishing email don't click on any links and there's lots of different types of phishing there's phishing there's whaling and a bunch of different other ones so that's definitely something that you can look into and phishing i feel like is more like human psychology and a lot of people i know actually in cybersecurity have a psychology background um because it's all about human behavior and what makes humans do something and there's actually legit concepts around phishing that are actually studied to understand what makes people want to do something and a lot of that sadly is driven on fear greed use of authority so there's definitely a lot you can look into there and because of that it's actually a really easy topic to get questions on in an interview and i would say that you would definitely want to get those correct because this is a lot of human psychology and if you did end up working for that company and you click on some email that is really fishy you know like fishy and that actually proves to be a threat to the network for that company um that could be a really bad thing so phishing is a really important topic that you want to get down okay so the next thing is common security practices these would be little scenarios like you shouldn't plug in a personal usb into your work computer and then try to take home a report to work on later or you shouldn't use public wi-fi or you should use some kind of screen filter or dimmer to make sure no one is shoulder surfing you so basically very general common security practices that you can look into because you don't have to know the exact word but you can always say like yeah i wouldn't use public network or or i wouldn't just plug in my usb into a server and then the last topic that i want to talk about was scenario walkthroughs so i kind of sprinkled them all around this video already but it's basically just when they give you some kind of diagram they give you some kind of scenario whether it's about an attack or how to protect the network or what to do better different things like that those are the main questions that are going to be getting you to think on your feet as well as making use of deductive reasoning so you can answer those questions as best as possible based on your current knowledge and also i want to say that if you don't know a question or an answer to the question that's okay like they don't expect you to know everything especially if you're in your early career so i feel like the best thing you can do is take in all the information as much as you can before your interview and then see okay this is what i know 
and that, that is exactly what you're going to tell the interviewer so i may not be familiar with dns servers but this is what i know about firewalls and blah 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 blah, blah. like i feel like this shouldn't be right or this shouldn't be placed here um, or i feel like you should add another firewall here between this network and this network so there's a lot of things that you can infer based on your current knowledge so even if you don't know exactly everything that's on that diagram they don't expect you to so that's okay don't let it freak you out if they give you some kind of really crazy diagram or a scenario that you've never heard about like oh they hacked into an email server i don't know i never work with email servers well that is okay just tell them what you do know and talk around what you think is the right solution but then try to put as much backing and groundwork about it as possible so you can explain your ideas and kind of walk through what you're thinking because that's the most important thing like knowing your mindset knowing how you think about ideas critical thinking and deductive reasoning are probably the most important things they are looking for in that interview okay so i probably talked your ear off but thank you guys so much for watching and i'm sure this is not like this is not a comprehensive list so i really feel like you should definitely do your own research and look up questions for whatever company that you're studying for and look up glass door questions and i'm sure if you look up like the name of your company and then like cybersecurity interview questions something at least will come up and you can definitely use those to help guide your studying but i feel like these are just general topics that you could look into that can kind of help guide you for what you should study for your next interview and again i really feel like comptia security plus topics and probably a plus topics would be really helpful just for studying for beginner level interviews because they're probably not going to be asking for like your experience and what you've already configured and already done especially if you're you know only like one or two years maybe zero years into your career so at least knowing these general topics will show them that hey this person kind of knows what they're talking about even though they haven't maybe done any hands-on work yet they know at a high level what these concepts are and how they work together so thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up i hope it was helpful if it was please consider subscribing and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesday at 2 p.m and sundays at 12 p.m and feel free to drop any ideas and suggestions that you have for studying for any cybersecurity interviews that you've already completed Completed, just in case it can help anyone else in the community and definitely drop any questions that you guys might have as well thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video bye